So it is March 27th. It is a lovely 39 degrees and it's time to go for a run. So this is just another one of my daily runs. At this point, I think I'm on day 27 of running every day and just a short mile and a half. Um, the day before this, I'd had one of my slowest runs to date at just over eight minutes a mile. My legs were shot, my squats that day were terrible. So I uh, decided just to take this as it was and see how it turned out. So I ran a little bit different loop than I usually do when I'm doing a mile and a half. But I make some funny faces like that when I'm running. Done with a mile and a half. A little better than yesterday. Quite a bit better actually. It's 7.29 a mile today. So not my fastest time. Not my slowest time. I'm okay with it. So we'll do a cool down walk and then I'll head into the house down to the basement gym and finish up a workout. So on some days when I'm just wanting to get a little bit extra workout but I don't want to do a long bike workout, I love having this air bike downstairs. Uh, a traditional Tabata workout will be 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off. Uh, there's no way I can handle 20 seconds on and 10 seconds off right now on this bike. Uh, so I'll do eight rounds of 10 seconds as hard as I can and 20 seconds rest. The uh, first couple rounds I'm always feeling pretty good and thinking, man, I could probably do 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off. But by about the last uh, two to three rounds, it's about all I have in me just to make it the 10 seconds. And by about eight or nine seconds, I'm struggling. And really, I'm putting in about 100% effort here. You can see the bike rocking. And it's a I mean, it's a heavy bike. It's not easy to get this thing moving. Um, sped this up. This is six times the speed. But just continuing through my intervals of 10 seconds on, 20 seconds off. And it's amazing doing this or doing Tabata style where it's 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off. Just how hard of a workout it really is. Um, you can see between the sets here just how much I'm breathing trying to recover. And I take this last set here and I put it back at uh, regular speed. Just so you can see I'm still working just as hard as I can on the 10 seconds on. And then I'm just gassed. So here's a summary for my eight rounds. Uh, pretty consistent, 33.9 for a max for a speed and 33.4 for an average. All right, so I finished off with a 150 calorie bike ride. Not really trying to push the pace. Just go for somewhat consistent while watching the Buttery Bros. If you haven't checked them out, you should follow them. They're entertaining. Here we are for the 150 cal. High of 24.5, I think, for speed. Average of 22.7. So not too bad for consistency. Okay, so I'm excited, but I'm kind of bummed. I was uh, downstairs just now. Hannah's doing her workout. And I was like, oh, I'll just try doing some pull-ups, see how many I can do. I haven't tested to see how many pull-ups I could do in a while. And I did 12, which is probably my all-time record number of pull-ups. And I didn't have the camera going. So I'll go down and I'll try. We'll see how many I can do this time with the camera going. Probably won't be 12, but I'm happy. That's My goal is to get 15 by the end of the year. And so the fact that I was able to do 12 without letting it go of the bar, for me, is huge. Hit it. Hit it, Soren. So I came back down here to with the camera to see how many pull-ups I'd be able to do, not expecting to be able to get my 12 that I had just done before that previous clip. Um, obviously you can see it, my form is not awesome. I'm definitely using my legs to try to get my head up over the bar. But I surprised myself. I got to uh, 12 again, and I thought, you know what? I'm at least going to try and see if I have one more in me. 
So I was pretty happy with how this turned out. Pretty sure. So pretty excited about those 13 pull-ups. Uh, I can honestly say I don't think I've ever done 13 pull-ups in a row. Obviously they're not like the strictest pull-ups, um, but I'm, I'm still happy with it. I do think it's important to have some flexibility in eating. You know, I've been eating a caloric deficit now for like a month. Um, and today we are having some friends come over and we're going to do crepes. And I'm going to have them. I'm going to eat a bunch of crepes and it's fine. Uh, also, haven't eaten all day. Mostly because I was working out this morning and then I got busy going to the hardware store, picking up stuff for some projects around the house. But yeah, hopefully the crepes are delicious because I have high hopes. High, high hopes. I was so busy eating crepes, I didn't shoot anything until this shot right at the end. So, I'll be honest, I probably ate like eight or nine crepes. Some with berries and whipped cream, others with uh, the cookie spread. It's like the Biscoff cookie spread um, and whipped cream, or just the Biscoff cookie spread. I'm okay with it, though. It's, uh, I think it's important to have some days where you're not 100% focused, and that's why if you're good 80-90% of the time and you let yourself have a day or a meal every now and then, that uh, you can still hit your goals and not feel like you're missing out. I think the problem that a lot of people have is they turn everything into an excuse to, you know, go beyond their goals. Um, every weekend, every, you know, what have you, every Tuesday, those are things that happen every week. So it's a matter of, I think, just finding those things you actually want to celebrate and have be important for you. So for me, this was my first time to um, it's not really a cheat meal because I'm not cheating, but my first time to not hit the caloric deficit for like almost a month and I'm okay with that. It was fantastic and tomorrow I'll be back on track, but I'll call today a win. Between the uh, 13 pull-ups and having some delicious crepes with friends, it was a good day.